Hello again, plant people. Welcome back to the garden. Uh, my name is Kevin Jordan, and today we're going to have a fun lesson. So, I want to congratulate you on making your day better by watching this video. Because by watching this video, you're already improving yourself. So, there you go. Good on you. Uh, just kidding, but today's video uh, will hopefully teach you a little bit or maybe reinforce some knowledge you already know. We're going to get in here and do some winter trimming. Um, it's winter time here in Northern California, and so this is a really good time from about late fall through the winter, through even late winter, is a really good time to get into your landscapes. This is what we call our, like our butterfly garden, our pollinator garden, our river friendly garden. These landscapes here that I'll show you some footage of, uh, they used to be um, lawn turf, and so they'd get watered every single day when I first came to the school uh, about 11, 12 years ago. I noticed these landscapes would get watered every single day, rain or shine, they'd get mowed every week, sometimes twice a week. Uh, when it was really growing hard, you know, in the, in the warmer months. And so um, I, we noticed the landscapers here all the time working on it, fixing, uh, you know, sprinklers and stuff. So we got a grant, we ripped it all out, put in drip system, put in drought tolerant plants, put in plants that attract poll pollinators, birds, bees, you know, all your, all your you know, beneficial organisms, your butterflies and whatnot. And so in here we got crepe myrtle, we've got salvia, lots of different types of sage, right? We've got butterfly bush, a few different varieties. We've got some herbaceous perennials. Those are your perennials that do do live year to year to year, but they grow, they kind of die back down almost pretty much to the ground. And so those get cut almost nearly to the ground. Uh, and we've got some woody perennials, things like uh, our lavender out here that we're gonna take a look at, as well as our ornamental trees like the crepe myrtle. And we've also got some um, some red bud as well that we'll have to, uh, that's ornamental that does really well out here that we'll have to prune back. So in this video, you're gonna learn how to do some of the seasonal pruning. All right, so before I start pruning on these beautiful crepe myrtles here, I'm gonna start by trimming out some of these the salvia here. I got this uh, what the hot lips salvia, beautiful plant. The hummingbirds love it, the bees love it, but it's, it's spent all summer, uh, even in the fall, growing a bit. Now it's come full circle, it's winter time here. And even though it still has you know healthy looking leaves and branches on it, they're so spent and spindly and, and spread out that it's time to get this, this plant cut back pretty hard. So with all my salvia here, um, actually, with, with, with all my woody salvia, at least, uh, I'm going to cut them back and probably leave about maybe eight, eight inches to a foot or so of, of material left behind, and then that, from that, all the new growth will come out. So let me show you right now how that kind of looks. All right, so I cut back the salvia, the hot lips. You can see I had three of them right here. One, two, and three. And you see they cut back pretty good. I got them about a foot tall, maybe about a foot and a half wide or so. Um, you can cut them back a little bit harder if needed because they'll take it. They're really uh, durable in that fashion. So if I want to cut them back and get even more material out of there, I can come back through and give them a trim. You can see behind them, you got our lavender. So we got a little Spanish lavender here. And so lavender are really great. They're super drought tolerant and they're wonderful plants to have. And so how we're gonna trim them back is we're gonna get pretty aggressive, but we're gonna trim mostly to shape and to keep them keep their size where we want it, where any dead dead limbs, dead branches are gonna get removed. Um, definitely wanna get in here and get them pruned up before they start, you know, setting bud and putting out more, more flowers, because I don't wanna have to trim those off. Oh, you can hear my dog going crazy. So I mentioned earlier that this is a pollinator garden, butterfly garden, and so right here next to me is a butterfly bush or budlia. This is, believe it or not, this super tall plant is actually a, a dwarf budlia. We have uh, another variety that I'll show you later that gets about twice as big. These ones get beautiful purple blossoms, uh, and obviously the butterflies love them. The plant is really easy to take care of. It's drought tolerant. We only prune it about once a year, unless we're harvesting the blossoms for, for bouquets, uh, in which case it's time, to, it's time to prune this thing back. This, this dwarf, most of the branches I probably cut with these shears, and then the, the shears have a little like notch in there that, that will help you kind of get larger branches. If I come across any branches that are that are too thick for these sh uh, shears to take care of, I'll go to my hand pruners or I'll go to loppers. But let's see what, what I can get this done. Uh, with these, it's going to be similar to pruning back, um, almost like the salvia, except for this is a bigger plant, so probably the mound that we leave behind might be a little bigger. But we're going to cut back a lot of this top growth to and leave behind um, just a stump uh, uh, of what, what, what you see here for you because that's going to make space for all new growth to emerge for next season. If I leave this here and don't prune this, the plant will survive. But what's going to happen is, this, is now it's going to try to push out new growth past all the old growth. It's going to get kind of uh, strangled up and it's not going to be a healthy plant. You know, it's going to be having all that new growth. It's going to have to battle uh, for space and light and air with all the old growth. And so when you prune it out of the way, 
plant can be healthy. You'll, 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 you know, some people, my students especially, are like, oh, are you sure I should prune this much off? You know, I remember growing up as a kid, my mom was always worried when I'd be doing pruning, she felt like it would never come back. But, I, but trust that, that the Budlia will come back just like the Salvia. Actually, I think they're pretty closely related. I believe they're both in the Lemaceae family. They got those square stems, but I'll get into that later. But let's see what I can do. We'll, we'll fast forward this really fast and then we'll get to the end product so you can see. But before I do that, you can kind of see, I'm gonna get in here and actually I'm gonna cut probably back, probably about the top two thirds, maybe even the top you know 70% or so is gonna come down. Um, same thing, you want nice clean cuts, you don't wanna be tearing the branches. So if you get to a branch that's too thick, you don't try to be a hero, go to a larger tool, sharper tool, more effective tool. All right, let's, let's get after it. All right, now that I got it cut back, you can kind of see it was super tall, right? About four or five feet or better, or actually probably six feet or longer, taller. But uh, you can see now that I got it cut back, this one's probably just about two feet tall or so, and I, I use my shears on it, but what I'll probably do now, this is a really good time to get in there and actually use your hand pruners to probably get in there and remove any dead branches, you know, that don't look too happy, too hot. You can actually see where this, where this new growth is coming. So if you wanna get real fancy and, you know, cut to an outward facing bud right there, or, to, or at least to, a, to a nearest bud, you can do that. But um, it's not too, they're not too particular. You can see right here, this is like a branch I would remove because it actually looks pretty dead compared to the rest around it. So anything like that, you're gonna wanna use your hand pruners to get in there, you can actually even use your leaf blower to blow out any of this material that's stuck down in there. And then that way light can get in there and get this thing back to life when the springtime comes. It's already trying, you can see it. So that's a Budlia. So if you're a home gardener and you're wondering, should I get a certified arborist to prune my little old crepe myrtle tree? Because I've heard horror stories of people destroying them. Don't do that unless you absolutely need it. Save your money, teach yourself a little bit, learn a little bit and realize that if it's a small enough tree and you've got the means, uh, to do it physically, you absolutely have the means mentally uh, to do it as well. The problem that people run into when they, when they have either somebody uh, prune their crepe myrtle for them or they do it themselves and make a mistake is usually when they just cut it back super duper hard. And the, few, the other things I showed you was cutting the, the salvia, the budlia, the butterfly bush, right? Um, the lavender even, um, the Santa Barbara daisies, all those plants, when you cut them back real hard, um, they, they, they can shoot right back with, with a full vengeance, no problem. And their structure and their form will look really good because that's just, they're bushy and they're, you know, they're wild little plants. They don't, they really don't have that, that ornamental feature of having, um, like a specimen look like we're trying to create with these trees right here. So all of the uh, crepe myrtles I have behind me, they're all like dynamite crepe myrtles. We keep them uh, a multi-trunk tree. So sometimes you'll see crepe myrtles sold or grown as a really small dwarf shrub all the way up to a large standard tree. And then in between you'd find your multi trunks. Uh, so they kind of grow as a large shrub naturally. And so all, all of ours are, have been trained into that. And that's what we want, the shape we want, a multi trunk canopy. And so we, everything that we're gonna do to, uh, with pruning that is gonna hopefully to accentuate that, that canopy and that healthy multiple trunk growth. Um, and so it would be similar to actually pruning our fruit trees a little bit. We don't want any branches crisscrossing the center. We don't want any branches touching the ground or you know, we don't want any broken branches, disease, disease branches, dying branches, dead branches. Those are all gonna go. Uh, suckers are a definite problem. You know, if, if you thought uh, your, your citrus got bad suckers, wait till you grow a, a crepe myrtle. They get suckers every single season. Actually, I'll show you right here. This one right here, the ones behind me. I pruned them pretty good last year with some students. This year right now, suckers are everywhere. So they just come naturally. These little, these little sprouts of branches and growth that come straight up out of the, uh, the base of your tree. And those aren't ideal for your growth. And so you'll wanna get rid of those as well. And so for us, those are the major things we're looking at. We're also gonna bring back some of that old growth from last year. Uh, this is a flowering tree. They're actually really beautiful trees. If you, anybody here, feel free to comment below uh, if you grow any or what colors are your favorite because they, I mean, they grow white, pink, purples, like lavenders, uh, different color shades of reds. Uh, and so just, just really, really beautiful trees. I don't think I've ever seen them in orange or yellow, but we'll see who knows, who knows what the breeders can come up with, but they're gorgeous trees. They flower like crazy, but by the end of the summer, these branches have kind of done and you still see them. They kind of look like that where you'll, those are all the old flower bracts um, and, and stems and whatnot. And so they kind of just sit on there. Sometimes you can even prune this tree earlier, like in late fall. Sometimes uh, if you can't get around to it, it's not a bad thing because the seeds kind of hang on there and the birds can come in and nibble on those or whatever. It's kind of fun to see them come in and make use of your tree. But now is the time to cut it back because pretty soon uh, it's going to be warm enough for them to start sprouting 
new, new uh, growth on their branches. And so right now it's a really good time. So as far as those, that old growth went from last year, we want to bring that all back in about 30 to 40%, give or take. It doesn't mean you want to come back in here and lop it all hard uh, and knuckle it back. Because then that's gonna, what that's going to do is that's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to get rid of some of that shape. And wherever you cut it back and make a, a really hard topping cut, right, where you, where you cut and you kind of pull the branch off and cut it, right, that's topping cut, that's going to create more bushy growth. When you do thinning cuts where you remove an entire branch altogether, that usually creates a little bit more openness um, and outward uh, and upward growth. And so we're going to do a little bit of both. We're going to do thinning and topping cuts, he heading cuts, um, to allow us to have some healthy growth. But like I said, what we don't want to do is, is be so aggressive like we were on some of our previous plants that I showed you. Salvia, the Budlia, they can handle that aggressive pruning. This one, not so much. So you want to bring them back, like I said, about a third or so. Um, let me see if you can see this right here. Um, like I said, a lot of the branches too, if they're, if they're, if they're if you have a branch crisscrossing back towards the center of the tree, you really don't want that at all. And so you'll prune those out completely. Uh, for a lot of the smaller branches on here, I'd say hold your hand pruners if you can, because you, you kind of have a better um, accuracy, I guess, with these, dexterity and whatnot. And then if, if anything too thick for this, just go with your loppers or even a handsaw if you, if you need to on some of the thicker branches, too, if you're making some nice, nice thinning cuts. But what we want is we want nice upward to outward growth. We want, we want to accentuate um, the, the, the multiple trunks that we got going, so all the suckers have to get removed. And so that's basically how you're gonna prune and create myrtle. So remove all the suckers, remove all the dead disease dying branches, remove some branches that are either touching each other or uh, that are crisscrossed through the center of your canopy. And then obviously you're gonna to wanna to tr tr uh, trim back and prune back a bit from last year and get some of that old growth, those old flower spikes back a little bit. But what you don't want to do is cut it back so hard that you just create, you know, a lollipop or a, you know a bushy tree, right? That's usually going to go, uh, go against what you want because a lot of the problems that crepe myrtles have. And I know I'm being long-winded, but it, hey, we're here to learn, y'all. Uh, is that they, they get powdery mildew a ton, and they also get like aphids, right? And so some of the that can be mitigated, or you can kind of slow down those problems, or even keep them from starting to begin with by just some healthy pruning because air and light kind of help. Uh, deal with fungal problems, right? And then sometimes those aphids don't, don't become such a uh, problem if, if you have some healthy pruning and your, your canopy isn't so clustered up and so dense. So here, I'll show you, so try to get some close-ups of some of the things I'm showing you, maybe some before and afters to give you a better idea of what it looks like to prune and create myrtle, give you a little confidence, that way you can do it at home. All right? All right, first things first, get rid of all these suckers. You don't want them on the base of your tree so you want to get in there with a sharp tool and just cut them all back as close as you can to where they started and then move on to the top. Gets people in trouble or they get a little scared is, is the top of the canopy here. So if, you, if, if you're worried you can just take small cuts. You can always cut off more but it's hard to kind of attach a branch back to the tree once you've uh, removed it. So you can get in there and Cut back some of that old growth, just a hair. Like here's an old flower branch right there. You can see it spike, uh, spiked up right there. Now I don't want to go back too far, so I'm just gonna come up a little bit. And we can always come back and prune off more if needed. But I'm gonna bring it back, like I said, about a third or so um, off that top branch, maybe a little bit more. And then we're gonna keep going from there. Any branches that are heading in a direction I really don't want, I'm actually gonna thin out completely and just remove the entire branch. So if I don't like it, I don't like it. One thing you can look for when you're pruning is uh, uathecas. Sometimes you'll be pruning these and you'll, you'll come across an uatheca, which is a praying mantis egg case. And if I find one during this episode, I'll definitely have to show you because they're pretty cool and I almost always find them on my crepe myrtles when I'm doing some pruning. Same thing with the butterfly bush. So there you go. So last time I'll tell you though, so you can see the top of the canopy here is just a little outstretched. So I don't want to bring it back too hard, but I definitely want to get rid of some of these branches. Now, if I've got too many branches all in one spot, I'll actually Pick one I don't want, thin it out, leave the ones I want. I'm gonna try to bring all this back just a hair, so that way we can make space for all for new growth to grow. If we leave it up there, our, our crepe myrtles are gonna get leggy um, on top, they're gonna get outstretched, and they're just gonna get a little overgrown, and all the new growth is gonna struggle to get past where the, where the old growth uh, was. So we wanna prune back some of that old growth, remove any branches completely if we want to, and then trim back and head the ones that we wanna get more bushy. Right, and so we, where you, the point at which you point, uh, cut them back to, is the point where all the new, that newest branches are going to form and cluster out. So just keep that in mind when you're making your pruning cuts.